God forgives and heals us. We need your healing, merciful God. Give us true repentance. Some sins are plain to us. Some we cannot face. Forgive us. Set us free to hear your word to us. Set us free to serve you. God forgives you. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Through Christ, God has put away your sin. Approach your God in peace.
God be with you. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the glory of the cross, you embraced the power of death and broke its hold over your people. In this time of repentance, draw all people to yourself, that we who confess Jesus as Lord may put aside the deeds of death and accept the life of your kingdom. Amen. In today's first lesson, God makes a new covenant with Abram and Sarai, our ancestors in faith. And even more, as a sign of this covenant, God gives them new names so that whenever they hear their names, they will remember the promises of God. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations, kings of peoples, shall come from her. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to God's people.
reading from the Gospel according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. Here are two names guaranteed to stop a conversation. Satan and Jesus. Maybe because many don't want one or the other to be real. Or maybe it's because we know they are both very real. And we should think about them more than we do. For Mark, it seems Jesus and Satan are not only very real, they are constantly paired with each other. Every time Jesus performs miraculous healing or drawing crowds with his teaching, Satan comes onto the scene. In the passage from Mark, we hear for this Sunday, Satan has come into the picture with Jesus while Jesus is having a disagreement with his best friend. Jesus is teaching the disciples. He's laying it out there, the kind of Messiah he is. A Messiah who angers and threatens the status quo. A Messiah who so offends the religious and governing authorities, who makes those in power so defensive that it can only lead to his suffering and ultimately to his being killed by them. Mark adds, and he said this all quite openly. This doesn't sit well with Peter. Peter pulls Jesus aside and tells Jesus to stop talking like that. Peter gets mad at him, criticizes Jesus, rebukes him, Mark says. Jesus responds, Get behind me, Satan. Now, if we had only come to this passage um, now, we'd think that Jesus is rebuking Peter in return, shutting him up with a harsh put-down. But we're coming in the middle of the story of Jesus teaching his disciples. Jesus has been here before. It all started when he was baptized in the River Jordan. Upon hearing the voice, You are my beloved child, with you I am well pleased, confirmed, affirmed, solid in his identity as God's beloved son, he spends the next 40 days encountering and fighting Satan. This is what those 40 days in the wilderness taught him to know himself and to know Satan. And now, 
Satan is in the voice of his best friend. The same voice of the same friend who has declared him the Christ, the Son of God, is the voice telling him to stop that suffering and dying talk. Telling him, Jesus, that he's wrong about the kind of Messiah he is. That he's wrong to think of himself like that. And especially wrong to be so open about it. When has Satan come into the voice of your best friend? Jesus and Satan. They both bring out our fears and anxieties. Jesus is the way of love. And the way of love is threatening. The way of love takes us to places of vulnerability. The way of love takes us out of our constructed ego structures that keep us feeling in control and safe. The way of love is disruptive. It can call us out of our systems of security. The way of love calls us back to our authentic selves. Jesus is the way of love. And the way of love makes evil rise to the surface and react with cunning and violence. This is what he was teaching Peter and the others. Jesus isn't saying the only way to be a Messiah is to suffer and die at the hands of the secular and religious authorities. And so the only way to follow him and be good is to suffer and die on a cross. No, what he's saying is that teaching and healing and paying attention to the marginalized and the poor and the outcast and the needy and the sick is to continue to, to continue to be led by God's love in the world will lead to suffering. Jesus knows who he is. Jesus knows how Satan works. Satan isn't Darth Vader exactly. Satan is the voice in our heads, our ego desire for fleeing or fighting. Satan is that impulse in us to hoard, to fear, to constrict. Satan is that deeply ingrained message in us that keeps us from claiming the spirit within us, that holds the grudge, keeps the anger stoked. Satan is the need to be right. Satan is that thing in us that causes us to go along with what our friends are saying to us, even when we know it's wrong or inaccurate. Jesus and Satan. Lent is the time for us to start the conversation, at least within ourselves and with our God. To practice Christianity is to claim your identity as a child of God and go deep into that, to live from it. It's to allow the force of God's love repairing, redeeming, and creating to use you, to work through you, and for you to be listening to that as your truth. And to claim your identity as a child of God is to know it just makes people uncomfortable. It can make us uncomfortable. Self-doubt. It makes our family and friends, society, nervous for us. And if we listen to them, little seeds of self-doubt, anxiety, am I crazy? Am I wrong? Creep in. And we can be immobilized. We, could, we quit listening to the divine things. Out of fear, we'll lose the human things. 
being the child of God and following the way of love doesn't guarantee being understood and appreciated by others, even your best friends and family. Because you're no longer seeking affirmation from others, you're seeking mercy and justice for others. Because you're no longer wanting security for yourself, but wanting God's truth. Jesus' way of love will get a response. Most times, it will stop a conversation. Sometimes, it will cause our best friend to quit listening to us and rebuke us out of their projections. And the temptation is to let our anxiety and fear shut us down. We have these 40 days of the examine to get to know ourselves and to know our Satan. This is the conversation the examine begins. Start with water. Remember your baptism and give thanks. You are God's beloved child. This is your true self. Now, write down a description of your true self, just between you and God. Go, stand out in the sun, close your eyes, feel its warmth on your skin. Pray for the light to let you see your true self, stand in it. Take a deep breath, in and out, inviting the spirit to renew you and remind you to live from your truth today. Take a moment, find God, stop, be still, quit thinking, which is usually judging self and others. Just be. Feel a relaxing. Feel a warmth. That is God with you. Saying, I love you. Hold on to a cross. Ask forgiveness. I'm sorry. I've gotten caught up in the voices of others. I have let human ego determine me. I have let the reaction of others keep me from acting as your child. I haven't listened to divine things. Open your eyes. Look up at the clouds, the sky. Look ahead with hopefulness. You are God's beloved. The Spirit of God is within. And you know this. You've located it. It's going to be okay. Jesus is in front of you. Leading you in the way of his love.
Let us pray to God, who is made manifest in Jesus Christ. We pray this day for God's people throughout the world, for our bishop, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. In this moment of silence, I invite your own prayers. We pray for justice, peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. In this moment of silence, I invite your own prayers. We pray for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. In this moment of silence, I invite your own prayers. We pray for those who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. In this moment of silence, I invite your own prayers. This week, our community continues to pray for Christopher, Thomas Lighty, Joan Verlingo, Linda McLaughlin, Diane Miller, The Forrest Family, Michelle Sloat, Susan Lawson, Dylan Toma, Villy Young, Banafshe, Laura Cope, Charles Vaughn, John and Arlene Borgeson, Nate Price, Michelle Blair, Nan Casulos, Tom Bryce, Renee and Bern Kemi, Wally Clevisall, Jim Prescott, the Murdoch family, especially Charlotte. In this moment of silence, I invite your own prayers. We pray for those who have died. In this moment of silence, I invite your own prayers. We gather all our prayers in one voice as Jesus prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hello, everyone. Just one big announcement for this week. Please be sure to mark your calendars for Saturday, March 6th, for the annual concert of St. Paul's Choir School, The Fleeting Year, A Musical Calendar. Remember, it'll be on YouTube at 4 p.m. on Saturday, March 6th. Immediately after that program, we will have a reception on Zoom, so go ahead and take a look at the bulletin for more information. Thanks and have a great week. Peace.
as you continue on this Lenten journey, may you be constantly reminded of your identity as God's beloved child. And when you meet Satan on the path, may you have both courage and patience to continue to follow wherever Jesus may lead. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you.